Are you as excited as I am? <laughs> Does the fugitive have a duffel bag? I was mad. There was bunny poop in my carpet. It wouldn't say a thing. It would just stick out its tongue and lick me. And there was a sperm bank in town. Weekly wrap up, and I brought my vest today. Sampling the tastiest leftovers from the entertainment ice box just before they turn green and walk away under their own locomotion. Greg Kinnear back with you. Hope you have yourself a good weekend. We're going to try and make it a little nicer with a few bits and moments from the week in talk. Coming up, the bug man meets his match. Some three way lovers hit a relationship crossroad, and and two sperm donors laugh all the way to the bank. So. <laughs> really what that was but great way to start the show okay here we go first up his name is james atchill and his achilles heel has a tendency to gawk at women with attractive backsides poetic as this sounds james is actually dating a woman by the name of chris buttram she is a fellow truck driver and the two of them usually co-pilot the same big rig in this highlight from rolanda chris explains why she doesn't like james checking out other woman folk the vulgar statements. What kind of vulgar statements? I mean, vulgar. What does that mean? I don't recall making any vulgar statements. Get <laughs> <laughs> somebody to find vulgar. Do you think he makes vulgar statements to women? Well, maybe not to them, but to me about them. Like what, for instance? That we oh, can say on what TV. a nice buck that is. <laughs> you say that to her? Uh... Yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. What, how does that, what does that do to you when you hear your man looking out a window making comments about another woman's butt? I mean, how, what does that do to you personally? Well, I, why should he be doing that? You know, it, it hurts me for him to be saying that about her because why doesn't he ever take time instead of looking at hers? He should be looking at mine. Mm -hmm. So what do you say? Well, I say, uh, looking at somebody's butt and commenting about it uh i don't really think that it's a problem because uh i'm not i'm not i'm not doing anything i mean i'm just i'm just commenting on it i'm not actually doing anything about it all talk no action he'll never be on richard bay i'll tell you that that is uh, james there chris buttram says that he gets into traffic accidents because he's so busy with his fixation on women. In fact, we have some old footage of him partaking in this somewhat strange, obsessive behavior. In the warm sunlight, he'd hide behind willowing palms and watch young nubile women swim aimlessly in the sea. And James would just gaze for hours. Monday, what happens when the green-eyed monster tears your relationship to shreds? It's jealousy way out of control. That'll be, uh, Monday. What? Bertice Berry recently spoke to a group of women who feel men are good for nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Up next, these female separatists square off with men who claim women should never, ever, under any circumstances, be deprived of their company. Take a look at this. David, what do you mean a woman can't live without a man? Well, you know, it, it, I was thinking about this in a plane ride up here last night, Bertice. Uh, I was getting these echoes in the bell of my memory from an old college professor. I think it's just all, it's this Freudian thing. It's this penis envy thing that women are just <laughs> suffering from. That, you know. Penis envy? Aaliyah? That's all. <laughs> Excuse me, I have never, nor will I ever, want a penis envy. <laughs> 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 Unless Somebody it's a taxi company. Only men have penis envy. <laughs> well, men and Mrs. Bobbin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor George. Men and Mrs. Bobbin. You know, I'm going to say this. First of all, I want you to know that I need you. <laughs> okay. I need you. And I need every woman in this room. You, what, that many? That's right. And I know I can't have you all today. Two or three, you're gonna have to come over tomorrow. But my point is, is that you all need us, all right? When that garbage gets heavy, hey, what are you gonna do? Divorce it. 
Hey. Till she catches him. Yeah. You know, darling, a man chases a woman <laughs> till she catches him. Oh, only true soup fans out there will know that particular tune sung by our own parents, Burr Kachi, many, many years ago when a man chases a woman. By the way, the woman in that clip is Alia Zobel, who is author of a book out you may want to check out called The Joy of Being Single, the pure bliss of it all. On Bertice's show Monday, putting mommy and daddy behind bars when kids set their parents up for a drug bust. Monday. A truly dedicated actor will do almost anything for the right role. Robert De Niro has been known to gain or lose up to 50, 60 pounds of pop. Marlon Brando and Sigourney Weaver, uh, not to mention Montel Williams, shaved their heads. The question Tom Snyder is after in this particular highlight is how far did Martin Short go to portray a 10-year-old boy in a new film called Clifford? Take a look at this. Are there any swimming scenes? Not uh, in this version, Tom. No, because, but, I mean, you would have to shave. Oh, no, no, no. I, there's, I nared my legs. You're kidding. Yes, what many is, times. Hey, hey, what, what is that like when you do that? When you, you know, like, well, you know, women nair their legs, and, you know, I always... Do you know what I love about you? Huh? That you're pretending that we don't know that you drag at night. <laughs> <laughs> and the sincerity. The sincerity. I wonder what it's like. And another thing I wonder, oh, what you. would it be like to wear a brassiere? I just wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. On Tom's show this Monday, an interview with author Marianne Williamson. She's promoting her new book. It's called Return to Love. Well, Denise and her sister Corey have uh, both been arrested for assaulting their mother. They claim they're not proud of this fact, and yet they're willing to appear on the Montel Williams show and talk all about it. Denise even brought along the weapon she used to put a sizable dent in her mom's rib cage: the family steel fire poker. The two of you, as twins, you kind of gang up on your mom, don't you? No, most of the time it's just me. It's just most you. Most of the time. You do the, you do the, the hitting. <coughs> Most of the time, yeah. I mean, just, uh, now you have something sitting beside you there in that chair. Uh-huh. Is that the worst thing you've done? Show, show the audience what that is. Fireplace poker. And did you hit your mother with that? <laughs> but, no, let me explain. It didn't, it was like we were fighting and pushing each other around. The, the fighting, the physical violence was mutual. It wasn't just me. And then, um... We kind of let it end at that, and she went and sat down, and she started yelling again. And I picked up the fireplace poker, but I made sure that the pointed end was pointed out that oh, way. Oh, you made that a little safer, right? Well, <laughs> I didn't want... I mean, I love my mother. I don't like her, but I love her, and I don't want to hurt her. But sometimes my temper gets really bad, I guess. And I picked it up, and um, I turned it out that way. And I didn't swing with full force. I just hit her like that. And what did your mother do when you hit her? She turned around and slapped me. Wow. Slap for assault with a fire poker. Actually, that... I guess that sounds about right. Let's check out the punishment conversion chart here. Uh, for assault with a fire poker, yes, the proper punishment is indeed a uh, slap. Let's check out other acts of violence here. For backing a car over your mother, no phone privileges. For hitting mom in the head with a steel anvil. Princess gets grounded for up to a month. And finally, for a 38 slug in Ma's midsection, we have a, oh, a two-week ban on all viewings of Melrose Place. On Montel's show, this Monday, a look at the controversial subject of date rape. Meet women who are attacked by men they trusted. When we return, Desiree gets a birthday cake spiked with malice, and some childless women explain why they intend to stay that way next. I don't like kids. Oh, what? <laughs> Okay, we got, you don't dislike them, you don't dislike no, them, you no, don't dislike them. Like you don't like them. Information authority. That's what he is. We're back. This week, Sally spoke to women who don't have kids and have no intention of becoming mommies any time in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much. Most of these ladies say they like children. They just don't want any of the little crumb snatchers running around soiling their carpet, finger painting on the walls, and flushing their precious jewelry down the toilet. After all... What are husbands for? <laughs> Take a look at this. 
I don't hate children, but that you were asking, you know, what is, how are we discriminated against? And people say, oh, you immediately, you say you don't want to have children. They immediately say, oh, you hate children. In the office, when I finally confessed <laughs> that I didn't want they kids did in the happened. office, and I was terrified because, you know, my boss, my senior producer has two children and she loves those kids. And I mean, and I was like, oh my God, I, I can't say this. I'm going to be fired, you know? And um, they, they, so everybody in the office is teasing me. They're like, you, oh, so I hear you hate kids. One of the producers is <laughs> running behind me in the hall and she goes, oh, Michelle, I hear you hate kids. I'm like, but I don't. But none of you hate kids. No, you don't hate kids, no. do you? No. I don't like kids. Oh, one. <laughs> okay, we got, you don't dislike them, you don't dislike no. them, you no, don't dislike them. No you don't like I know I, I like, dislike. I, I like individual children. I love my niece and nephew. I love my goddaughter. I don't find children intrinsically interesting at all. Okay. We, we do. Not until they can carry on a conversation. But what if one of the little ankle biters could actually hold an intelligent conversation with you? Have you, have you ever thought about... I think your problem with children is based on your own childhood. I think you're just sublimating for some event that caused trauma in your own life. And I think Hillary Clinton is responsible for Whitewater. I think the Rose Law Firm is going down. Well put, baby Jack. Kid like you must have some awfully smart parents. On Sally's show this Tuesday, like father, like son, like wow, meet dads who are teaching their boys to become total woman. <laughs> Should I sell it for you, Bob? Becoming <laughs> total womanizers. Uh, Gene and Desiree are both engaged to be married and they couldn't be happier. Unfortunately, their friendship may be sailing, could be sailing, may very possibly be sailing for some troubled, nasty, dark waters. Friends, Gina has asked Desiree to be her maid of honor, but Desiree has not returned the favor. Don't go jumping to any conclusions. That's not the problem. Up next, our friend Richard Bay and Gina give Desiree a birthday present she won't soon forget. Take a look at this. We have some good news and some bad news for you. What would you like to hear first? I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll give you the good news first, okay? okay? The good news, Gina, tell her the good news. To pick up the cake. I want you to be holding on to something when you get there. Here's the bad news. Gina, tell Desiree the bad news. I slept with Kevin. Do this to me. Just or even. That was the highlight of Richard Bay there. Uh, I don't condone this kind of silliness on talk shows, but one more time in slow motion if we could. Desiree rearing back now with cake in hand, finding the unsuspecting smokes this. Tuesday, his honor, Judge Bay, will be presiding over the cheater's court. He'll be passing judgment on several unfaithful lovers and undoubtedly destroying lives in the meanwhile. Coming up, Richard Simmons tracks down a fast food offender, plus a sperm donor explains what inspires him to give till it hurts. Next. And there was a sperm bank in town, and they were offering $30 or $50 for each acceptable sample of semen. We're back. It's the weekend edition. That's where we spend our Saturdays and Sundays, right here, making TV magic. This past week, fitness fanatic Richard Simmons was a guest of Shirley. You know the Shirley show down there in Mexico. He dropped by to promote his line of workout tapes and paraphernalia. He also made a point of harassing the backstage crew and even Shirley's bodyguard, Robert, as he tried to say hello to Shirley. Let's see if we can keep up with Richard Simmons. This is Robert Stevenson, and he's the bodyguard. You know, like Whitney Houston had a bodyguard. Because I, I'll always... Anyway, come over here, we'll meet. I, I, you know, I, I just wanted to go in maybe and, like, 
Just say hello really quick to Shirley if I could. Okay, let's say, Richard. Shirley is going over that research. She thoroughly, thoroughly has to go over the research. She prepares for the show. You know, I haven't I love done... to have you in, but I can't let you in, Richard. I haven't done the show in a while, and I thought maybe I would just sneak in and just say hello quick. I can't let you in. You gotta... Sorry, Okay, look, you. let's do it. Look, let's... Uh, democracy. You got a coin? You got a coin? Um, Get a coin, we'll flip. Heads, I get to go in for just a second. Okay. You know, I know she's heavy into the research. Tails, you lose. Okay. okay, heads. Heads it is. Hey, there you go. Come on in. Here we go. Hi! Oh! Oh, my God! Oh! Oh! Shirley! Oh. 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 What is this? Oh, they my said God. you were in here doing research. Oh, so what is this research? Oh, okay. This is pizza. Put it down. Oh, oh. Put it down. No, put it down. Richard, we're going to do some exercise. Richard, we're going to do exercise. Come I on. Mean. I can't believe you're eating that stuff. And the daytime Emmy goes to... On Tuesday's show, Shirley answers the proverbial question, how do you mend a broken heart? Some relationship experts will be on hand to help out. Please tune into that. Probably sitting at home on the weekend, got your little warm tootsies up on the ottoman, hot chocolate in your hand, thinking to yourself, you know, how exactly does a sperm bank work? <laughs> it's, that was uncalled for, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Is it like a regular bank, for instance? Can you open a checking account and get little designer checks with Southwestern landscapes painted on them? <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn on Rolanda right now. She discusses this question with a couple of actual sperm bank donors. Don't believe we've seen these guys. <laughs> How does a guy decide to do that? I oh. needed the money. Um, <laughs> well, at least they're honest yeah, about it. <laughs> I, was, I was married at the time and um, had a, a child, a, a young infant, and both of my wife and I wanted to spend time with our kid. So an additional part-time job for either one of us was out of the question. Um, it would have taken too much time away from, from either one of us. And there was a sperm bank in town, and they were offering 30 or $50 for each acceptable sample of semen. And I said, okay. And uh, initially, I started off doing it for the money. Let's not discuss why he ended up doing it. Rolanda later asked the guys about their output. No. How many deposits have each of you made? <laughs> Probably about one a week for uh, about four years. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 wait, that sounds like a lot, but remember, not every one of these results in a pregnancy and not everyone results in a birth. And not so. everyone is good either. Oh, yeah. On this Tuesday show, Rolanda speaks to parents who lost their kids to vindictive spouses. Some child abduction tragedies discussed there on Tuesday. Take a quick break and be back with a real killer. Please stand up. Plus the saga of two old friends, a two-year-old boy, and a cage full of bunny poop. Her son takes the bunny cage up and turns it upside down with the bunny in it. And there was bunny poop all over the floor. Joe! We were going to call it talk gruel, but that sounded way too depressing, so we stuck with the soup thing. Lisa's son, Joey, was just two years old when he tipped over a pet rabbit cage owned by her best friend, Mika. This maneuver turned Mika's deep pile carpeting into a deep pile of compost. This incident caused a serious rift. Apparently, this caused a serious rift between the two women, which recently landed them on the Ricky Lake Show. Please watch and wonder. And I have this bunny in, in my baby's room, and it was filthy. It needed to be cleaned out. There was bunny poop in it. And, and uh, <laughs> You know how those bunnies are. <laughs> <laughs> and she, her son, takes the bunny cage up and turns it upside down with the bunny in it. And there was bunny poop all over the floor. Plus, I had cat litter in the bottom of it. And uh, I thought, oh, <laughs> no, you know. And I thought, well, I'll just go get Lisa. She can handle this. And so I said, Lisa, come look what your son has done. And she walks in, and she starts laughing. She is cracking up laughing. She thinks this is the funniest thing she has ever seen. But wait a minute, how old was this child? <laughs> he was two at the time. He's two years old. He's a smart little boy, though. He is. He is very smart. He's never been around a rabbit. He was very curious. 
And I didn't start laughing when we walked in the room. When we first walked in the room, I got on to him. I did not spank him until I no, started no, laughing. She when we is laughing, and she is, and, she, and you were laughing, and you told him, Joey, apologize. Who did you do? You apologize. You're no, laughing. And what does this kid think? He thinks. Oh, this is funny. Mommy likes that. Let's do it again. Oh, no. this is my house. He's got to learn to respect my house. Okay. I was mad. There was bunny poop and more carpet. I had to say to that. <laughs> Saturday. Ricky show this Wednesday. Get to know women who have a warm and fuzzy feeling for their brothers-in-law and don't know what to do about it. Warm and fuzzy, as in bunny fuzzy. Stacy Moran was 14 years old when she was convicted of killing her mother. She served four years in an adult prison for that crime. Now she claims, she's always claimed, that she was actually covering up for her father. And this highlight from Maury Povich, Stacy sits behind a wooden partition while her husband Jim has a shouting match with his in-laws, including Stacy's grandmother, aunt, and father. This trial ended for Stacy. No, it the, did not end for Stacy. It went on and it's going on forever. I'm the one that lost my daughter. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This trial ended for her no, in February of 1993. She was, she was a kid. She was a kid. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, just sit down. That's our, I want to tell you something. That's what we're trying, sit down. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring it out to the point that maybe this thing can come down. The Twilight, it's not, it's not going to help anybody if you get this emotional. It's not good. And Anne, it's not good. Oh, my daughter, she was beautiful. I know she I know she <laughs> Wait a minute, guys, listen. Let me talk just a minute. I love my granddaughter because she killed her. And my you great... You are sitting beside the killer. You never came you. to me. Hmm, that is the highlight of Maury. Stacy's father is not exactly the picture of respectability. He was just released from prison after serving a seven-year term. The crime he was convicted of paying two hitmen to bump off the local sheriff. Later, Maury had this comment about the whole show. This has been one of the more bizarre shows I think we will ever do. We'll see. Wednesday on Maury's show, meet kids who don't want their parents to split up and meet the parents they're trying to keep together. Wednesday. You know, if uh, Marge Simpson were in high school today, not that she is, but if she were, she'd be labeled a dangerous subversive. This highlight from... Oh! This highlight from Montel teaches us that some school officials believe high hair, hair that is, well, high, is gang-related fashion statement. Meet Alicia right now, a young girl who was recently suspended from school for letting her hair exceed the three-inch maximum height. How high could your hair be? It couldn't be over three inches high. But the thing was, is they said, she told me that the rule had been in effect for two years. But four, I've been going to that school since I was in sixth grade. And four months into the school year is when they started suspending me for my hair. And I mean, they didn't suspend you just once. You got suspended 12, 12 times? times. In, a to in a total of, they start started suspending me like three or four months ago. And Yolanda, you have to now get up in the morning and help her get ready for school, right? What do yeah. you do? With, you got a ruler there. Well, what do you do every morning? Actually, she measures her hair as she's doing it. She's got to keep putting the ruler in. No, that's too high. And keeps... But before she leaves, you ha I have to put it where the hairline starts. And to me, this would be about four inches. But because of this one hair right here, the, the principal would consider it five. So for that one hair mm -hmm. being up, the principal yes. says, go home. Yeah. Yes. They would call me out of class every morning to measure my hair. First period, go to the office, office, if it was over three inches high, I'd get sent home. You know, Tom just made an interesting observation. What a great way to get out of school. Just blow that puppy straight up. You're free for the day. 
Alicia apparently has been suspended a total of 12 times for her high hair, a problem our friend Montel never had. Wednesday on his show, watch the sparks fly as mistresses confront the women whose homes they are busy wrecking. The other woman speaks, and America will listen. Wednesday. After this break, little Richard rides again, and a man foolishly agrees to let his ex fix him up on a, a blind date. We're back. Our own Cynthia you've seen on this show countless times back in Oakmont watching the show with Grandma Zoller and Grandma Schmidt. So that means we obviously we obviously have to do the talk soup quote of the week, obviously. <laughs> Excuse me. This pearl comes to us courtesy of the very single woman who appeared on the Bertice Berry show. Excuse me, I have never, nor will I ever, want a penis. <laughs> Sorry you had to see that, Grandma Zoller and Grandma Schmidt. Uh, one can only guess what cruel whim inspired Joseph to appear on this edition of the Richard Bay Show. First, his ex-girlfriend, Felicia, insulted him. Then she questioned his manhood. Later, 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 she set him up on a blind date with someone from his less-than-promising group. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Take a look at this. Number one, the same question, what would the mirror say to you? It wouldn't say a thing. It would just stick out its tongue and lick me. <laughs> I bet he says that to all the guys. Yeah. I... You don't hear something like that from too many nice Jewish girls, Not though. Not too many, no. Yes, next question. Bachelor at number two, it's springtime and things are beginning to heat up. What would you do to Joseph that would get him all heated up? Let's see. Start our evening off. I would start with a candle-lit kosher dinner. <laughs> and then afterwards, I would take some hot oil and give him a massage wherever he wanted it. All right. One last question, Felicia, and then we're going to let you percolate. Number three, what would you do to Joseph to get him heated up? First of all, I'd make him a good plate hot chicken soup. <laughs> We were going wild. Oh, no, 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 Tom. It was a chicken soup mention. But, Tom, <laughs> you know the constitutional bylaws of a talk soup mention is listed in Article 5 of the soup mention handbook. Overzealous celebration and excitable atmosphere is permitted only in the event of a specific talk soup mention with the words themselves not being separated or altered in any way, form, or fashion. Chicken soup is clearly a blatant alteration. Sorry. Go. This Thursday, Rich will be unveiling his wheel of torture and victimizing family members who refuse to change their anno annoying way. <laughs> Say the word chicken soup and everybody goes nuts around here. Sheeny Christmas. When we all know that according to the top, well, I won't go through it anymore. No one has ever accused Little Richard of false modesty in concert. He's been known to declare himself not only the king of rock and roll, but the, the queen of rock and roll as well. <laughs> this week... Thanks. This week, Little was a guest on the Sally Jesse Raphael show. He talked about his upbringing and revealed an obscure fact about his childhood. You were born with one leg shorter? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, was, I, was, I was born... I was deformed. When I was a little boy, uh, um, my, um, my brothers and sisters, it's so silly what I would do, uh, being from Macon, Georgia. I would call them everything Sally. I would get married, I'd call them, you big, fat, so-and-so, you know how the kids. I said, you slew-footed, you know, that's my old black term. Uh, you, and, 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 and you probably don't hear white people saying this, you cock eyed it, you know. And, and, and I, I hear them hear him sitting over in the corner with their biggest head in the area. And the shortest leg, head bigger than the whole city was living there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yes, indeed. Who could ever forget Little Richard's first hit? Big head, short leg boogie. It was... On Sally's show this Thursday, some recovering addicts ask their families and friends to forgive them. I'm straight, and I'm sorry, Thursday. 
past week, The Shirley Show hit an emotional high note by exploring the Nazi Holocaust. The show was a difficult one for Shirley herself, who was actually born in a displaced persons camp after the war, and her mother is, in fact, a Holocaust survivor, naturally, when a, when a woman in the audience started to downplay the impact of this historic tragedy, Shirley shut her down quick what you're saying to the people in this room who are survivors of these camps who were tortured this young man whose father was castrated a man who has had no no grandparents no uncles no aunts lives were destroyed we can't but forget german that lives were destroyed too and we're not getting but, reimbursed but it was anything oh. it was the germans who it was the germans who started the war there was, it was a not handful the of them there was no a no that's you did not Doris. I will not hear revisionist history in this studio. If you came here to tell me that six million of my people didn't die, you have two options. Just be quiet or get out. Because I won't listen to this from you. And I, I'm not even talking, I'm not even talking about just my people. There were millions of others who went to the camps who died. How dare you? How dare you say this to us? I don't want to hear from you anymore. That's right. You only want to hear one-sided. I gave you two options. You said your piece. I let it surely. Shirley agrees with Steven Spielberg that the story of the Holocaust should be taught in schools around the world. And Shirley show Thursday. What's it like telling your best friend that her husband is cheating on her? Tune in. Find out for to tell or not to tell. That'll be Thursday. Not a lot I could say about this next highlight from the Vicki Lawrence show, except that I'm really glad this next woman you're about to meet isn't my mom. Ellen has been married to the same man for 38 years. That's not the bad part. Uh, <laughs> she came on the show and got into a little groping match with soap heartthrob Christian LeBlanc. Ah, Christian, he's something else, isn't he? As part of her audition on Vicki's housewife talent quest, she had to actually read lines with this particular soap star, and it got uh, awfully steamy. Action. I've waited for this moment all my life. When I first saw you, I knew it would lead to this. Are you as excited as I am? <laughs> Does the fugitive have a duffel bag? <laughs> I want to squeeze you like there's no tomorrow. I want to possess you for all of eternity. I want to consume you. Stop it. I shouldn't even be here. You just want me for my incredible body. That's not true. When I first saw you at work, I knew instantly you were a caring, sensitive person of, of rare intelligence. You probably say that to all the topless dancers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you and you alone that I want. I knew at the moment our eyes met as I stuck that $10 bill into your G-string. It was a 20 it was? So, the real you comes out. So I'm flawed. All that matters is that we're together. <laughs> Don't delay the moment of truth. I'm ready. Take me on the sensual joyride of my life. A little creepy. <laughs> I lot of Vicky's. You may have guessed Ellen's done some acting in a community theater. She's a ringer! That's what she is. You know, recently we've been conducting uh, auditions for this particular show with some of the crew, and um, actually they've been going pretty well. I think we have some footage, don't we? This is Talk Soup, but I have a steel plate in my head. Doink, doink, doink. Monday on Shirley, find out the secrets of romance. Welcome to Chalk Soup. By the way, who does your lighting? It's real good. That's funny. I thought they were identical twins. CBS This Morning correspondent Gordon Elliott is a large man. Several young mothers appeared a bit cavalier. Cavalier? Who likes this shit? Este es Tolsu. En un momento estará aquí. Greg Kinnear. Oh, there you go. You happy? Yeah. On Vicky's show this Thursday, meet a banker, a preacher, a pilot, and a beauty queen. And guess what? All of these folks are age 12 and younger. We'll take a uh, quick break. 
and be back with a little Bob Berkowitz and this. Not to their ears or their nose, but to their penis. My ex-wife name might be. Which was? George. George. Uh -huh. Don't ask you why, but she said, George, are you ready? A aircraft carrier size set here into the studio for the new improved E! News Daily. And the excitement here at E! Entertainment Television has reached a fever pitch that has us all just a little tingly, I guess. I can't think of any other way to decide it. And meanwhile, as you can see from, from my set, uh, they've continued <laughs> to give me everything I deserve. <laughs> you know, some guys are so immature. And I think I know which ones you are out there. According to this highlight from the real personal show, uh, some guys get a kick out of assigning nicknames to certain parts of their anatomy. Here's a little scene now from a show on CNBC. Again, it's called Real Personal and Bob Berkowitz cutting right to the heart of the matter. Bob? Do you have a name for your penis? Uh, no, I don't, but uh, maybe some of the callers could. Uh... <laughs> what about you, Jerry? Only when it doesn't work. <laughs> and I can't put those names on public. I understand. <laughs> why, why do some men, I mean, a lot of men, give a name to their penis? Not to their ears or their nose, but to their penis. My ex-wife named my penis. Which was? George. George. Don't ask you why, but she said, George, are you ready? And, uh, well, father of our country. The, med the medical explanation for why men have nicknames for their penis is that they hate to have a complete stranger make all their decisions for them. That was Dr. Abraham Morgan Taylor, which is kind of funny because that's what I call my penis. All righty. Take it easy out there. On Real Personal this Friday, break out the champagne. It's a second anniversary special. Has it been two years already? Isn't that exciting? Well, Katie says her ex-husband John is a serious kinky hombre. She claims he lured her into bed with another woman who just happened to be one of their close friends. That incident brought an untimely end to their six and a half year marriage. Now Katie wants an apology and she's hoping she can get one from a little help from Ricky. Take a look at this. I wasn't happy with what I, you know, did. I'm not proud of it at all. You know, it's really... Well, what? Oh, you think I Go on with your story. <laughs> I mean, you, a person who is pressured into something like this you has a lot of guilt. Excuse me? When you done it, you acted like you were feeling pretty good with yourself. What the hell was I supposed to do? You enjoyed... I got up and walked out of the room. You didn't get up and walk out of the room. You want me to remind you? If you got to. Apparently so. It didn't make an impression then. It's not going to well, now. Katie, my broke. what do you want today? I mean, do you want him to apologize to you? In a way, I would like, you know, him to just understand and realize what I went through for six years of our marriage. You know, every night, what it did to me every night when he would say, oh, baby, just imagine me and you and some other woman. Every single night. And it night, got you an awful I got, lot harder. I got... <laughs> you are sick. You are sick. Uh, No. This is sick. I mean, you did you actually ask her mother and sister to have a threesome with the two of you? No, she asked her mom. Oh, no, I did not. She asked her I mom. Did not. I, I sure I... walked into my mother's bedroom one night while she was on the phone, and you said, well, I better wait till she gets off the phone. And she got off the phone. Who well, walked see, back you done in there? there. Uh -huh. She done not talk to her mom. No. And sure, it was my idea. Mom was good looking. I mean, no, no doubt about it. the comedy portion of the Ricky show this week. Uh, you could spend a day at Central Casting here in L.A., and you could not cast these folks, could you? Friday on Ricky show, no, you couldn't. <laughs> when overweight people get more dates than their friends, do fat folks really have more fun? Find out Friday. Watch the body language in this next clip carefully. Tina is getting awfully touchy, but Tim seems glued to the farthest end of Lisa's infamous sofa of couch. This is what happens every time Miss Lisa tries to play a matchmaker. In this case, she's fixing up a lovelorn bachelorette with the exterminator of her dreams. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Tim, I'd have never guessed by the hat that you had anything to do with bugs. Oh, uh, I don't know what gave you the clue about it, so. Yeah, this is what I do for a living. I'd have known you anywhere just by the way she described you. Uh, well, I didn't hear that part, but. Oh, well, Tina, you can tell him. You have a beautiful smile, you have gorgeous shoulders, and oh, God, you are just gorgeous. Don't you think? 
Tim, when we called and told you there was someone who had a crush on you who wanted to meet you, did you have any idea it was Tina? I had no idea. No clue? No, because um, at my job I had so many customers. It was since like Wednesday when they called me, I was just like, I was going through who in the world could it be and all, so it was, there was definitely no way I could find out. Are you sure. flattered? Very much, yes, yeah, very much. Very much. <laughs> So, Tina, what do you want to say to him? I mean, this is like your moment. Look at you, just all these <laughs> nerves going on. He's sitting three inches away from you. I know that. Would you, like to, <laughs> would you like to go out for dinner into a movie and just have a very nice evening with a very nice young lady? I sure would. It'd be my pleasure. Kind of funny to think that if it weren't for roaches and other household pests, these two wouldn't have met. Friday on Lisa's show, meet the parents of missing kids, find out how the disappearance of a child can affect a person's entire life. Well, I'm happy to say we got one last highlight for you just ahead, an etiquette lesson that's bound to make your eyes pop, your jaw drop, and your ears flap like the wings of an enraged albatross caught in a stiff headwind. Next. One last highlight for you, then we're going to let you go on and live your lives freely. This week, Richard Bay invited two sets of guests to discuss the true meaning of good taste. His panel consisted of some so-called home girls. Sounds good when I say it, doesn't it? Hey, you home girls, what are you doing? Another group of women dressed in more conservative fashions. For what it's worth, I think all these ladies have class up the yin-yang. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to say it is once for all forever, at least for this week. The Talk Soup Clip of the Week. Everybody can be a woman. You can be a woman. You could be a nine-year-old girl, have big chest, big butt, and be, have a woman's body. But your heart. No, no, no. I don't mean about the I'm saying it's a difference from being a woman and a lady. I'm a lady and I'm a female. No matter what I have on. Oh, yes, I am. Girlfriend, look at what you coming out of Look at what you coming out of here. Very good. I look very good. Don't wear some stuff like that. All right? Okay? So you talking about what you got. Kill be my size, sweetheart. of Ted Koppel, babies got back, and forgive me for sounding overzealous on this one particular point, but womp, there it is. On this Friday show, Rich will be doing some relationship counseling. Tune in and watch him work his magic. That's going to do it. Have yourself a great weekend, folks. We'll see you back here Monday. Coming up next on E, it's E! News Week in Review. I've got to put on my news voice, Week in Review. It's coming up next right here on E! Week in Review. Da -da -da -da. Where's the teletype?